Hey, Frost Mages. Do you want to do more damage in Mythic Plus? Well, then this video is for you. My name is Valoran, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the top three things that I see players doing or not doing that cause you to do lower damage in Mythic Plus. And in my opinion, these three things will make the biggest impact on your overall damage output throughout the key. And then after we've talked about these things, we'll put it all together and break down the rotation for you. Okay, let's do it. Now for this video, you'll notice I'm using a splitting ice build. And I know a lot of you use freezing rain builds depending on dungeon, key level, whatever. But it doesn't matter which build you're using. The concepts I'm going to explain here are universal. No matter which build you use, which covenant you play, these tips should help improve your damage. Number one, the biggest possible thing you can do to increase your damage is to cast more Blizzard. So first, you absolutely have to begin with tracking your Blizzard cooldown on your UI in whatever way will get you to cast it every time it's off cooldown. So look here at the text on the Blizzard tooltip. Each tick of Blizzard on each target lowers your frozen orb cooldown by half a second. So if you cast one Blizzard, four targets, your frozen orb goes from a 60 second cooldown to a 42 second cooldown. And that's just from one Blizzard. So imagine casting it on cooldown. So the reason Blizzard is so important has nothing to do with its damage and everything to do with that cooldown reduction. If you cast more Blizzard, you get more frozen orbs, you get more fingers of frost procs, you get more icy propulsion conduit procs. You get icy veins back up way more often. Essentially, you get a lot more damage. So, the rule of thumb here is, if Blizzard will hit at least two targets, you need to cast it on cooldown as much as possible. Number two, cast icy veins more. So, yes, you should have icy veins available bosses, but that does not mean that you should hold icy veins for bosses or for large pulls or anything like that. And we're going to talk about the AoE rotation at the end of this video, but if you're doing your optimal AoE rotation, you should be getting so much cooldown reduction on icy veins that not only will it come off cooldown for every single pull, actually it'll come off cooldown multiple times per pull. And since you get a free root of power, Every time you use Icy Veins, you definitely want to hit it as often as possible. The only time you ever want to hold Icy Veins and not use it is on single target pulls that aren't bosses. So like Tormentors, uh, single pulls in theater, things like that. Because the more targets you hit, the easier it is to reset Icy Veins. But on single target, admittedly, it's a little tougher. Fortunately, there are two things coming in patch 9.2 that make resetting Icy Veins on single target significantly easier. And in 9.2, you can probably just send it on almost, if not every single pull, whether it's one target or however many targets. One, if you've got the two-piece tier set bonus, the Comet Storm procs from that two-piece also give Icy Propulsion, which is huge cooldown reduction on Icy Veins. Two, there are just fewer single target pulls uh, because the Tormentors uh, affix is going away and the new seasonal affix in 9.2 adds additional targets to every boss. The only other time you hold Icy Veins is when the current pull is almost dead. Especially in Pugs, this is somewhat dependent on the tank. The slower your tank pulls, the more it's going to hurt you if you used Icy Veins near the end of the last pull and you don't have anything to hit for a while. If I'm being honest, I've been known to uh, accidentally pull the next pack sometimes. On the other hand, if you ever see a tank who pulls extra mobs into a boss, trust me, this tank knows exactly how your class mechanics work and they are specifically trying to help you funnel the boss. So just send it. Ultimately, learning when to use Icy Veins and when to hold it it does take a bit of a learning curve. You're not gonna be perfect at it right away, but in my opinion, I recommend erring on the side of using it more because I feel like you'll learn more from that mistake 
than you ever would from not using it enough. Number three. Honestly, this one is less important than the other two. Uh, it's more of a cool trick that drastically improves your icy veins cooldown. And in the AOE rotation segment later in this video, you'll notice I don't do it. However, if you're struggling to maintain icy veins uptime, or if icy veins is ticking and the pack is about to die and you need a, a boost toward, towards your cooldown reduction as you go into the next pack, I do highly recommend learning this trick and applying it when you feel you need it. Now, yes, you have to be somewhat close to melee range for this to work, so please only do it when it's safe to be in melee range. Frozen Orb Crits actually proc Icy Propulsion. So if you cast Frost Nova while both Icy Veins and Frozen Orb are active, Frost Nova actually gives you a Shatter bonus on that Frozen Orb. And yes, in a group, that Frost Nova is going to fade really quick in about a second. But Frozen Orb damage ticks come so fast that even one second of Shatter is enough to see a massive chunk come off of your Icy Veins cooldown which means that the Ice Ward talent that gives you two charges of Frost Nova actually becomes a DPS increase, unlike any of the other talents on this row. Now, there's really no set rule for exactly when and how to use the two charges. Personally, I use one charge per Frozen Orb. Some people use them back to back. There's really no conclusive evidence one way or the other. I will take a brief moment here to mention that Cone of Cold crits also proc the cooldown reduction. But in most cases, I think if you get good at the first three things, you'll find that you don't even really need any more cooldown reduction than that. Last but not least, earlier you heard me mention the optimal AoE rotation. And you'll notice for this segment, I'm playing Venthyr. Please note that I do not play Venthyr in Mythic Plus. Uh, there's nothing wrong with playing Venthyr. I play Night Fae just like almost all of you out there. But Venthyr and Kyrian are the only Covenant Halls that have packs of five target dummies. Uh, however, this actually helps highlight a point that I want to make. The Covenant choice doesn't really matter much for Frost in Mythic Plus. None of the Covenant abilities outside maybe Shifting Power for Night Fae really affect this rotation at all. If you're playing Night Fae, you want to use Shifting Power when as many abilities are on cooldown as possible. So basically that means when Icy Veins, Runa Power, Blizzard, and Frozen Orb are all on cooldown. As for conduits here, I'm using Icy Propulsion, Ice Bite, Unrelenting Cold. The only change I usually recommend here is if you're playing the Freezing Rain build, uh, use Shivering Core instead of Ice Bite. Of course, there's always gonna be other niche builds out there, but I think this fits about 90% of players, especially up to and including uh, plus 15 keys. So let's quickly look at a sim that I did earlier for target dummy AOE on five targets. And at the end of this clip, we'll see how close I got to that target. So unlike, for instance, Arcane Mage, uh, which casts a specific sequence of spells in AOE, Frost Mage follows more of a priority system where you rotate from high to low priority actions. And we'll pull up the AoE rotation here. This AoE rotation is specifically from my 9.1 Frost Guide uh, that you can find down in the description below if you like. Uh, however, they should all say the same thing, whether you check Toe Grinder's Guide or Wowhead. Whichever guide you follow, they should be almost identical to this, if not identical. So essentially, the way a priority system works is that every single spell you cast, every global cooldown, you work your way down this list. Is Icy Veins up? If it's not, cast Icy Veins. If it is, move on to Blizzard. If Blizzard is on cooldown, or there's only one target, whatever, move on to Frozen Orb. If that's on cooldown, move on to Rune of Power, etc., etc. And it may seem overwhelming at first, but really, I promise with a little practice, you'll be pumping out the damage before you know it. And I know we've talked about this earlier in the video, but I want to highlight the fact that Blizzard is almost the highest priority spell in this rotation, second only to Icy Veins, and that's exactly why it was my number one point earlier. Even if you track your Freezing Winds procs and you're going to munch one of them, I promise you, 
choosing to cast that blizzard instead will give you way more procs over time than you ever lose. So when I begin combat, you'll notice I cast blizzard, frozen orb, icy veins, which is a little out of order, but frost spells don't snapshot when they're cast. So as long as it's active when your spells hit the target, you're good. So without further ado, let's get into the rotation. I said we're going to start with blizzard, immediately frozen orb, start dumping procs. Blizzard. Frost bolt since we don't have any procs. Continue dumping procs. Blizzard and Frozen Orb and Rune of Power are all off cooldown at the same time, so we're going to combo those together. Continue dumping procs. Reapply Blizzard. Continue dumping procs. With the occasional Frost Bolt when you run out of procs, Icy Veins is back off cooldown. So we're hitting Blizzard, Icy Veins, Frozen Orb. Continue dumping procs. Reapply Blizzard. Reapply Blizzard again. And in just a second, our Frozen Orb will be back up. So we're going to use that. Reapply Blizzard. Continue dumping procs. And Icy Veins is about to come back up. Reapply Blizzard. Icy Veins. Continue dumping those procs. Frozen Orb is back up. So we're going to Blizzard into Frozen Orb. Continue dumping procs. And then as soon as this free Rune of Power from Icy Veins ends, we're going to Blizzard. Drop that Rune of Power. Continue dumping procs. Once again, Blizzard into Frozen Orb, dump the procs. So as you can see, we've already completed the same core rotation several times here. So I'm just going to speed the rest of this clip up a little bit while I give a little final commentary, if you will. One of the things a lot of players ask is, what should I do with Brain Freeze procs? Well, the AoE rotation in my guide actually kind of answers that. You should actually use them before spending Fingers of Frost procs as long as you won't lose any Fingers procs. Now, especially when Freezing Winds Legendary is active, you definitely should not bother attempting to shatter a Frost Bolt, okay? Just send the flurry when you have a spare global cooldown. That's it. Now, on five targets like we have here, you really won't be in that situation very often as you can probably tell from watching me here. Uh, because you can plainly see that I hardly ever have time to cast a Frost Bolt at all. But on two or three targets, you certainly might end up weaving in a, a bit more brain, free, brain Freeze Flurries. Next, I highly recommend using a weak aura like the one you see here to track exactly when you're gonna get the next proc from Freezing Winds. It'll help you tremendously when it comes to making decisions on the fly, like, do I have time to fit a Frost Bolt or a Brain Freeze Flurry into this global cooldown before I munch a proc? And you'll notice I'm hovering right around 23,000 or so DPS here. So I'll admit, even I'm a little bit below that sim number of 23.8K uh, that we looked at earlier. But I hope that I've explained all of these concepts well enough to help you pump a little harder. If you feel like you need to break these concepts down and work on one thing at a time, in my opinion, you should focus on Blizzard uptime first and foremost above all else. If you set up your UI to show Blizzard cooldown and you get used to that, I promise you guys, everything else will follow. I sincerely hope this helps some of you improve your gameplay and ultimately gets you into higher and higher key groups. This spec is an absolute blast to play in Mythic Plus, and honestly, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. If there's anything you feel I forgot to mention, or any other topics you'd like to see me cover, by all means, please feel free to drop a comment below, or on my Discord, or on Twitch, all of which you can find the links to down in the description below. If you like this video and you'd like to support my channel, please, consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.